From Pacifica, this is Democracy Now! This investigation against our organization is the largest investigation uh, and prosecution against a publisher uh, in the United States history uh, and arguably uh, anywhere, in, anywhere in the world. It involves over a dozen uh, different uh, government departments. Top secret documents leaked by Edward Snowden have revealed new details about how the National Security Agency targeted WikiLeaks and its supporters while placing the site's founder, Julian Assange, on a man-hunting target list together with al-Qaeda. We'll speak with Julian Assange in the M Ecuadorian embassy in London, where he's in political asylum. Then interrogated at the airport. Who's Edward Snowden? Where is Bradley Manning? Why have you gone to Russia twice in three months? Those were some of the questions Snowden's legal advisor, Jesslyn Radak, was forced to answer when she flew into London's Heathrow Airport Sunday. She'll join us today. And then New York Times labor reporter Stephen Greenhouse, and a big defeat for organized labor in the South. Workers at a Volkswagen plant in Tennessee reject the United Auto Workers after a costly anti-union campaign backed by Republican Senator Bob Corker. All that and more coming up. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. A new report based on top-secret documents from Edward Snowden has revealed how the United States and Britain targeted the whistleblowing website WikiLeaks after it published documents on the U.S.-led war in Afghanistan. According to a report co-authored by Glenn Greenwald and published at TheIntercept.org, Britain's top spy agency secretly monitored visitors to a WikiLeaks site by collecting their IP addresses in real time. Meanwhile, the National Security Agency added WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange to a, quote, man-hunting target list alongside al-Qaeda suspects. The leaked documents also show the United States urged its allies to file criminal charges against Assange over the Afghan war logs. We'll be joined by Julian Assange and his attorney, Michael Ratner, after headlines. In Iraq, a series of deadly car bombings has rocked Baghdad, an area south of it today, one day after another wave of explosions killed at least 24 people. Monday's blasts in the Iraqi capital included attacks targeting Shiite mosques and the explosion of a bomb-laden minibus. Police in Thailand have launched an effort to oust demonstrators from protest sites in the capital, Bangkok. At least three people have died in the resulting clashes. The government of Yingluck Shinawat has been embroiled in a political crisis since November, with opponents calling for her to resign and be replaced by an unelected council. In Ukraine, tens of thousands of anti-government protesters have attempted to march on the parliament, sparking clashes with police. Opposition lawmakers, meanwhile, are pushing for changes to the Constitution that would curb the power of President Viktor Yanukovych following months of protests over his decision to strengthen economic ties with Russia instead of Europe. Protesters recently ended a nearly three-month occupation of City Hall in the capital, Kiev, as part of an amnesty deal with the government. But they've continued calls for Yanukovych to resign. In Venezuela, President Nicolas Maduro has accused his opponents of mounting a coup amidst violent anti-government protests that left at least three people dead last week. Claiming the United States has sided with the opposition, President Maduro ordered the expulsion of three U.S. consular officials. I have ordered the foreign minister of the republic to declare persona non grata and expel the three consulate functionaries of the Embassy of the United States of America in Venezuela. That they go plot in Washington, that they leave Venezuela alone. President Maduro accused the U.S. officials of meeting with students in a bid to stir up unrest. The White House has denied any involvement in the protests. Opposition hardliner Leopoldo Lopez has vowed to turn himself in after holding a final rally today. The government issued an arrest warrant for Lopez last week, accusing him of inciting violence. President Maduro has also called on his supporters to rally today. 
A United Nations panel has issued a wide-ranging report accusing North Korea of crimes that shock the conscience of humanity. Following a year-long investigation, U.N. investigators warned North Korean leader Kim Jong-un he could face responsibility in the International Criminal Court. The human rights abuses detailed by the panel include extermination, enslavement, sexual violence, religious persecution, torture and the kidnapping of foreign citizens. Panel chair Michael Kirby described the findings. What is unique is in the capacity of North Korea to sail under the radar, to avoid international scrutiny, to avoid uh, examination of its record over such a long time, effectively 60 years. Uh, of very great wrongs against its population, wrongs against the Christian population, wrongs against uh, 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 minorities, uh, wrongs against women. Uh, these are, in their magnitude, uh, in their gravity and in their number, are truly exceptional. In South Korea, meanwhile, a court sentenced an opposition leader to 12 years in prison Monday, accusing him of plotting against the government in favor of North Korea. Lee Soki has rejected the charges against him, saying his trial was part of a government bid to muzzle progressives. Talks aimed at solidifying a deal over Iran's disputed nuclear program are opening today in Vienna, Austria. Iran, the United States and five other world powers reached a temporary deal in November requiring Iran to curb uranium enrichment in return for easing crippling economic sanctions. The renewed talks are aimed at establishing a more long-term deal. On Monday, Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, accused the United States of hostility toward Iran. The nuclear issue is an excuse for their hostility. Even if the nuclear issue is resolved to the satisfaction of the Americans one day, which is extremely unlikely, another issue will follow again. Just observe now that the U.S. government speakers are raising human rights issues, missile issues, weapons issues, and so on. I am surprised the Americans are not ashamed to even talk about human rights. Two members of the Russian protest group Pussy Riot, who recently returned from a trip to the United States, have been detained in Sochi, Russia, where the Olympics are underway. Nadia Tolokonikova and Maria Alakhina spent nearly two years in prison for protesting Russian leader Vladimir Putin inside an Orthodox cathedral. They'd planned to stage a protest against Putin in Sochi. Meanwhile, a transgender activist and former member of Italy's parliament has staged back-to-back -back actions in support of LGBT rights at the Olympics in Sochi. On Sunday, Vladimir Luxuria was detained after displaying a banner reading, Gay is OK, in the Olympic Park. The next day, she attempted to enter the Olympic hockey arena wearing an elaborate rainbow headdress and carrying a gay pride flag, and was promptly escorted away. She said she was pro protesting Russia's so-called gay propaganda law. If I stop wearing the colors of the rainbow just because somebody took away a flag from me, that means that these people win. And I don't want to be guided in my life by fear. I want to be guided in my life by courage, the courage that I've always had in my life. Back in the United States, an Arkansas man is behind bars for allegedly opening fire on a car full of teenagers over the weekend, killing a 15-year-old girl. Police in Little Rock say Willie Noble shot at the teenagers after they dumped eggs and leaves on his son's car as part of a prank. 15-year-old Adrian Broadway was shot in the head and died. Noble has been charged with first-degree murder. And the oil-rich city of Williston, North Dakota, now has the highest average rent in the United States, surpassing both San Francisco and New York City. Williston is at the center of a boom in domestic oil production fueled by fracking in the Bakken Shale. The population has surged in recent years, with many oil workers unable to find housing. According to the website Apartment Guide, a one-bedroom apartment in Williston now costs nearly $2,400 a month, almost 900 more than the average in New York. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Nermeen Sheikh. Welcome to our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world.